So woodworking students, today I want to talk with you about the compound miter saw, um, some strategies for using this safely and also using it correctly and how to get good results from it and what it's capable of doing. So, so let's take a look. This uh, saw is called a compound miter saw. And let me explain that term a bit. Miter in, in the woodworking world refers to uh, an angle. If, if woodworkers talk about cutting a miter, creating a miter, they're talking about some sort of a cut or some kind of a joint that's at an angle other than 90 degrees. Uh, typically 45 degrees, although it could be something else also. So the fact that this is a miter saw means that it can cut at an angle. And the compound part, I'll explain in, in, in just a moment. Sometimes you'll hear this called a cutoff saw. That's actually not strictly correct for this. Uh, a, a cutoff saw typically only just kind of is a simpler machine, which just makes one kind of cut just at 90 degrees, but you'll often hear this called a cutoff saw. In fact, I sometimes even call it that myself, even though that's not actually the most accurate term for it. So the first thing to know is that it will make cuts at an angle. With, to use this saw, uh, I'll demonstrate it in more detail, but, but you basically bring it down on your piece of wood in order to make a cut here. And the way it's set up right now, our piece of wood would be at, uh, put in like this, and we would make the cut at 90 degrees like, like that. However, this saw can be turned like this. If we wanted to do a 45 degree, we can turn the, uh, the saw, the, 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 the whole saw on the turntable here at an angle and make a cut 45 degrees this direction. Or we can go the other direction, turn it this way, make 45 degree cut in the, in the, in the other direction with, with the saw. Um, and any angle in between also. Uh, so uh, it's very useful and practical in that sense uh, for, for making all kinds of cuts uh, in pieces of wood as we're putting together a, a project. The compound part is that in addition to tilting to angles this way, you can also tilt the saw sideways like this to make cuts uh, at an angle that way. So if I loosen this big connection back here, I can actually tilt the saw over at an angle one way. Uh, in this case, it only goes one direction. Some saws will go both directions, but I can tilt the saw over to make a, a cut at an angle, angle that way. So that's, that's more versatility for this saw. And I can put this at an angle also. So it's not only at an angle in one axis, it's an angle in the other axis, and that's where the term compound miter saw comes in. It allows us to make, uh, combine these two angles to make complicated cuts on pieces of wood. So that's the compound miter saw piece of its, of its definition. Now this miter saw is a little different than the one we have in the shop at the school. They are very similar. They function much the same way, but you'll notice they look a little bit different. And they do have one other key difference that I'll point out to you uh, a little later. But, but for now, pretty much everything I say about this saw that I have here in my shop applies to any compound miter saw, whether it's the one at the school or, or anywhere else where you might, you might come across this or use one. There's a few things about using the saw safely, and some of them apply to any kind of saw. First of all, if you're working with any kind of power tool uh, in a wood shop, you wanna make sure that you don't have any clothing or articles on your clothing that are going to uh, dangle down or possibly get cut, uh, caught up in the, in the blade of the saw. So you're gonna make sure you don't have loose sleeves or a scarf on or a, a tie or long hair or anything of that sort, jewelry maybe that might dangle down or a ID badge or something like that. You wanna make sure that those things are not in your way as you're making any kind of a cut with any kind of power tool and certainly anything that involves a sharp blade like this does. So, so the first safety rule is make sure you don't have anything on your clothing or on your body that's gonna dangle down and possibly get caught in the saw. The second thing is pretty obvious and that is you wanna keep your hands out of the way of the blade, right? You wanna keep your hands um, away from the possibility of getting cut. I talk about, uh, in the safety lecture, I talk about something called the three inch rule, which means that you wanna keep your hands at least three inches away from the path of the blade. 
And remember, it's not just where the blade is at any given moment, it's where the blade goes as it makes a cut. So for example, as we make our cut here with this saw and the blade comes down, we wanna make sure that our hands are no closer than about three inches from the blade on either side of the blade here as we're making our cut. So you wanna make sure your hands are further away than, than, than three inches on e either side. It should be pretty obvious, but, but it's, it's something you always wanna be reminding yourself of. People do get hurt on these if they're not, if they're not careful. Oh my, what have I done? Don't let this happen to you. The next thing to be aware of in terms of safe operation of this saw is where you are putting your hands when you're making a cut. In addition to being three inches away, you want to make sure your hands are in the right place. These saws usually are ambidextrous, which means you can operate the saw with your right hand or your left, either way. Up here on this saw, <laughs> The power switch is up here on this handle, and that's typically where it is for most of these saws is up here on this handle. And I can do that with my right hand, and I can do it with my left hand either way. What you will typically do when you're making a cut is you will have one hand on the saw to operate the power switch, and you have the other hand on your piece of wood holding it in place to make the cut. Three inches away from the blade, but holding the piece of wood to make the cut. What you wanna be careful of is to not have your arms crossed. In other words, don't try to hold the piece of wood over here and then cross over to operate the saw. Because notice where that puts my arm. It puts my arm in the way of possible contact with the, with the blade. What I wanna do is make sure that my hands are on opposite sides of the, of the blade, opposite sides of the saw. So if I'm holding the wood over here, then I wanna operate with my, with my left hand, then I wanna operate the saw with my right hand. Similarly, if I'm holding the wood with my right hand, then I wanna operate the saw with my left hand and not cross them like this. Okay, this would be, this would be wrong. Again, it's starting to put my arm in the way of the saw blade here. And so I need to switch my hands so I don't have that problem. Now my hand is well away from the path of the blade over here where the yellow uh, plastic is. My hand several inches away over here. And when I make the cut, now there's no risk of, of getting caught in the, in, in the blade. So just make sure your arms are not crossed in any way when you're operating this saw. The third thing you'll do, and you'll see this as I make the cut, as you make the cut, you don't slam this saw down or force it through the cut. You actually wanna ease it through the cut and let the blade and the motor catch up to the cut. Let it cut only as quickly as the saw can cut without changing speed or without slowing down very much. If you hear a big change in the noise of the, of the saw and the motor as you make the cut, it may mean you're just trying to make the cut too fast. You just need to slow down a bit. You're gonna let the saw come down nice and gradually through the piece of wood to make the cut. And then when you're done making the cut, you're gonna let the saw stop while it's down in the down position. Let the blade stop before you raise the saw back up. That is also a way to make sure you, it doesn't kick up the piece of wood as you raise the saw back up and you're just less likely to, be, to get into trouble with getting cut by the saw. So I'll demonstrate that, but look for that. When I make the cut, I'm gonna leave the saw down until the saw stops moving, then I'll let it back up. So here we go. I'm putting my piece of wood in here. Um, let's assume I know where I'm cutting this uh, at, at some mark here. Putting my hands on the saw. I am uh, holding it down with one hand, operating with the other hand, and just gradually moving the saw through the cut. letting it come to a stop before I let it back up. When you're making a cut on the saw, there's some additional things you should keep in mind in, either, in order to get good results and to be safe. First of all, any, any power tool and any saw, uh, motor operated saw has one or more con what I call control surfaces. They are the surfaces that help position your piece of wood in the proper place in order to make the cut safely and accurately. On this kind of a saw, we have, we have two. We have the bed of the saw here, so the piece of wood rests on, on the flat on the bed, and we have a fence here that the wood sits up against. When you're making a cut, 
on a compound miter saw, your piece of wood should be flat on the, on the table or the platform of the saw, and it should be resting right up against the fence. And in fact, you should hold it there with one of your hands as you make the, the cut with the saw. So you, you wanna make sure that your board is right up in that corner and there's no gap here, or it's not lifted up in some way, maybe you know sitting on a pencil or something like that. You wanna make sure the piece of wood is completely flat against the table and against the, the fence when you're making the cut. In order to get accurate cuts on the compound miter saw, you need to follow the uh, guidance I've given you about correct measuring and marking. So for example, on this board, there's a piece here that I would like to cut off that's this long. And you'll notice here on my board, I've marked with my line. I, there was my V mark to mark my distance. I use the combination square to draw my line across so I have something to guide the saw. And then here's my X that shows that this is the waist side of the piece of wood. This is my measured length over here. This is the piece I want. And then over here is the waist piece that I don't care about. And my X is on the waist side, as I showed you in the other video. So now when I'm going to make the cut, I want to line the blade up so that the blade falls on the waist side of the cut. So I don't make my desired piece too short here. So as I do this, I'll lay this down. I will bring the saw blade down with my hand, you'll notice here, my hand is not on the power switch. So I don't run the risk of turning the saw in accidentally. I'm just pushing the saw down here uh, to bring it down to the cut so I can line the blade up with my pencil mark. And I want the blade to be on the waist side. So I'm moving this and I'm looking, as you can see, I'm looking straight in at the blade so that I can see where that blade touches the wood and where, uh, where it's gonna make the cut. And I want the blade on the waist side of the line, right on the line, but on the waist side. So now that I've got that all lined up, I'm gonna hold my piece against the fence so that it doesn't move. If it moves, I have to start over again and line up the saw, okay? I wanna hold it there against the fence so it doesn't move three inches away from where the blade's gonna cut. And then I can make my, I can make my cut. waiting for things to stop before I move things away. And now you can see I've made my cut right here, right on the line, right on the pencil line uh, where my mark was. So to walk you through this process one more time, just as a review, you're going to, uh, if you're making a cut on a piece of uh, a wood to a certain length, you're gonna make your mark and you're going to mark on your piece of wood a line across to help guide your, your setup on the saw, and you will put an X on the waist side of your piece. So this is the piece we want, that's a measured length, and this is the waist part over here. When you come up to the saw, you're gonna put the wood against the table and against the fence. You're gonna make sure you're grabbing the saw in a way that your hands are not crossed. You're gonna have one hand on the, on the piece of wood to hold it against the fence, and one hand on the saw. I'm bringing the saw down with, with my hand off of the power switch. Bring my hand down so I can line up the blade so that the blade makes a cut on the waist side of the, uh, of the line. You can just literally see where the edge of the tooth is gonna cut and just line the line up there on the waist side, making sure my hand's three inches away from the blade as I hold it, holding it steady, starting the saw, making the cut. Waiting for the saw to stop. Once it stop, bring it up. Now I have my piece and I'm ready to go on to my next step. There's one significant difference that I want to point out to you between the saw that I have at home and the compound miter saw that we have in the shop at, at the school. Um, I would have made this video at school, but it's a snow day today. And, uh, and so I figured I'd go ahead and make this video so that you have it available. Um, but we'll practice, if you're coming to campus um, and working in the shop, we'll actually practice on the saw at the, at the school. Here's the key difference. My saw just simply tilts down and makes a, a simple motion down to cut, which is great. But what that means is that it can only cut a board 
so deep. The, the saw is only so, the blade is only so big. The saw can only cut so deep. And it turns out that from the fence out to the edge of my blade is, is eight inches. So the most that I can make a cut on in one cut here with my saw is an eight inch wide board. The saw at the school is a little different. It pivots down like this, but it also slides out this direction. So, uh, it, and the reason it does that is so that you can actually make cuts on boards wider. I think it can cut up to something like 10 or 12 inches wide instead of just eight inches on, on this saw. So if you're using the saw at the school, the only difference is if you're cutting a wider board, instead of just tilting the saw down, you're actually gonna pull the saw out and down and then push the saw gradually through the cut to make the cut on the full width of board. It's much the same as this, but it just has that additional feature where you can pull the saw out away, tilt it down, and then push the saw back through the cut to make that wider cut. There's one last technique that I wanna show you on the compound miter saw that applies not only to the compound miter saw, but to other kinds of saws as well. And it's a technique that can help you get more accurate results and actually speed up your, your work in a way that's really beneficial. So let me bring the camera in closer and show you uh, this approach. Often in woodworking, we are cutting multiple pieces that are identical to each other, the same length, same dimensions, and so forth. For example, if you're making a table, a typical table has four lengths in legs, and you're cutting all four legs to the same length. So on the compound miter saw, there's a very easy way to set this up to make multiple cuts that not only is faster, but it's also more accurate. So let me show you that here. You'll notice I have a block clamped to the fence of the saw here. This is called a stop block, and it's just held in place with a clamp or a couple of clamps. This stop block is placed so that's exactly the right distance away from my saw blade for the cut that I need. For example, in this example, it's five and a half inches. Let's say I need four pieces that are each five and a half inches long. So I can either hold or uh, lock the blade in the down position. All of these miter saws have a, some kind of a lock that you can set that holds the blade, holds the, uh, the blade down, the saw down in the down position for you. So that's what I've done here. Now I can take my, my tape measure and lay it along here and put my stop block at five and a half inches uh, for my cut. Again, in this example, it's five inches. It, it could be any length, could be, could be three inches, could be 30 inches. It just depends on what your project requires. But in this case, I need five and a half inches. So the edge of the stop block is at exactly five and a half inches on my, on my ruler from the, from the blade here. So once I've done that and I have it clamped securely in place so it's not gonna move, I can get rid of the, uh, the tape measure and now I can make my cuts. So I let the saw go back up. I have my board here. I don't even have to mark the board. The, the stop block already will make my pieces exactly the right length. So I don't have to mark out the pieces on the board the way I did in the previous example. In this case, the stop block is gonna set the length for us. So now that I have this all set up, I can put my piece into the saw. I hold down the piece that's next to the stop block, and now I'll make my cut for my first piece. Letting the saw come to a rest before I let it back up. So there's piece number one. Now I just move my board over. Make my second cut for piece number two. Piece number two. Piece number three. Move my wood over against the stop block. Don't slam it against there too hard because uh, then you'll, you run the risk of moving your stop block and then your cuts won't, won't be the same anymore. So you just wanna sl gently slide it up to it. Hold your piece. And there's my fourth piece. So now very quickly, I've been able to make four cuts of the same length very quickly and accurately. And now I have my four identical length pieces here uh, to move on 
with my project. Anytime you're cutting two or more pieces, you should use this technique. Um, it may feel like it slows you down with a couple of pieces, but the point is not always just to do it faster. It's the fact that setting up the stop block allows you to get the precision of making all the pieces exactly the same. And that's often the, what you want in, in doing a woodworking project. So anytime you're doing two or more cuts in the same way, you should set up a stop block and make those cuts, uh, make those cuts that way. Anytime you're using power equipment in the woodworking shop, you should have two pieces of safety equipment on. And it doesn't matter if it's a compound miter saw, the table saw, the band saw, sanders, any power equipment that you're using, handheld or, or floor standing models, you should have two pieces of equipment on in the, in the wood shop. One is a pair of safety glasses. If you wear prescription glasses like I do, they're sufficient. Modern pre prescription glasses have impact resistant lenses and they are sufficient for our purposes in our class. If you don't wear glasses or if you wear contacts, you should wear a pair of safety glasses that you can get in the wood shop. We have a supply of them there. The second thing that you should always wear is hearing protection. And again, we have a number of these in the wood shop that you can just pick up and use as needed. So if you are operating the saw or you're working with someone who's operating the saw, or if you're even nearby, you really should have hearing protection on to protect your hearing. 